It's time to get our actual baker in action here in his own sequence. So from the asset browser, let's go to sprites and PCs and open up that baker subgroup. And we have all these new assets that we imported. I want to drag in the walk left uh, animation for the baker, but let's just do something first. Now, remember I said that whenever you drag an asset into the uh, dope sheet or into the canvas, wherever your playhead is on the timeline will determine where that asset key begins. Again, you can adjust this at any point, but just to make our lives a little easier, I'm just going to place this where I want it first and then drag something in. So I want this to happen just a little bit after this background fades in. So in my case, that will be around here at frame 28, let's say. And then I'm going to drag in the uh, SPR Baker walk left. And I'm going to drag this into the canvas area because I want to be specific about where I'm dragging it. I want to drag it outside of the canvas on the right hand side. So there he is. And you'll notice because we have automatically record changes turned on, we've already got a position parameter track built in. What we want to do is make our baker move to the center of the screen. So we can do this two different ways. I'll show you both. I'm just going to extend my baker asset key here just to give me a bit more room to play with. And then I'm going to just move my playhead, I don't know, to frame 45. Let's try that for now. And then I'm going to drag the baker over to the center of the screen. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can click on the asset on the canvas and hold shift to constrain his movements. Or you can also use this position gizmo to only move him along the horizontal axis. Now, because I had automatically record changes on, it automatically created the position keyframe. So that animation is finished. If you don't want to do that and you want to be a bit more specific, you can always turn off the automatically record changes button and then do this manually. So in my case, I'm actually going to adjust the baker a bit. I think I placed him a little too high. So I've got him selected here in the canvas and I'm going to go to the position parameter track. I'm going to select that first keyframe that it made and I'm actually just going to manually change some of these values. So it has an X and Y value and I'm going to change this from 98 to, oh boy, let's say 120. You know what, let's put it down to 130. You know what, a little bit more, 150. Beautiful. And you can see how he moves on the canvas. Keep in mind that I do have to have that keyframe selected for that to work. So now he's still there at that new position. And I'm just going to uh, scrub along the timeline until, let's say, keyframe or frame 45. That sounds good. And I'm going to record a new key manually. So not automatically. Then I'm going to click that new keyframe. And here I'm going to change the actual um, X value manually. It's going to change that number. Put him at 110 or 90 maybe. I'll just hit enter. So you can see how you can adjust these keyframes in multiple ways. You could have also manually recorded a keyframe and then like move them around, see what number you like, and then change that number. Notice though how if I'm moving him around without automatically recording a keyframe, I'm getting these yellow numbers. These aren't going to stick. So however you want to do it, just make sure that your baker walks over to the center of the screen. I've got my baker now walking in from the left of the screen, but I still think he's a little too high on the canvas. I'd like to have him down a little bit. Now, if I just select both keyframes and try to change the Y value for both at the same time, it'll actually record the same X and Y value for both. So it's going to undo my animation, which is not what I want. So in this case, I'm just going to select each keyframe and change that Y value manually. I'll put them both at 220. Notice as well that if you want to get a little bit specific about where you're uh, moving on the timeline in regards to keyframes, they have these little arrows here for each parameter track that says jump to the next key, jump to the previous key. So you can always click that and it'll jump to whatever that key is and then you can change its value 
a lot more simply. It's especially good if you have a whole lot going on and it's getting hard to sort of pinpoint the exact keyframe you want. There, I'm happy with that now. Let's make a few more changes. I'm just going to run this to the beginning and press the play key and see what's going on. Now, you'll notice something with my particular version of the sequence. The baker comes in, but he's walking a little bit too quickly. We can adjust this with a few different uh, techniques. Now, you can always just change the duration. It, it takes him to reach the center of the screen by moving the keyframe for the position parameter track. But if you do actually want him to appear on screen a little bit more quickly, but his animation's a bit too uh, fast or too slow, we can change that with another parameter track. So make sure you have your Baker track selected and choose the Add Parameter Track button. And there's one here called Image Speed. Let's go ahead and select that. Now, Image Speed is a percentage. Now, how does this work? Well, if you open up your Baker sprite from the Asset Browser, remember there's the FPS setting in the Sprite Editor. The image speed acts as a multiplier of this setting. So if it is set to 100%, that will be 100% of this 10 FPS speed. So you can change the FPS speed, or you can change the image speed here in the sequence editor, or you can change both. I'm gonna make an adjustment here just to see what happens. So I'm gonna move my playhead to the beginning of this asset key, and I'm going to click on a new keyframe for the image speed parameter track. And let's change this to 50%. Now if I play, you'll see that his animation plays much more uh, slowly. I'm not sure if that's 100% right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that keyframe again and say change that to 75. And that looks better to me. So depending on how you want to have your Baker set up in terms of how long it takes for him to get on screen or whatever FPS setting you set on the original sprite, you can play around with that image speed parameter track um, and adjust it so it looks right to you.